Hello everyone and welcome to today's event where we're going to be focusing on ask me anything about email marketing. So we're going to focus on email marketing. What are you utilizing for email marketing? You might be utilizing a third party tool or something of that nature, but did you know that PhotoBiz comes with email marketing suite built right on in that can allow you to send up to 10,000 free emails per month? Yes, 10,000. So if you have a large list, you can really hit all the people inside your CRM. And that's one thing that it connects to. We have a built-in CRM as well. So the studio management software within the PhotoBiz platform allows you to control the functionality and be able to send email campaigns directly from your dashboard. So you're not having to utilize third-party plugins or third-party tools and spending money where you don't need to. So we're gonna focus on that today, how you can utilize email marketing within the control panel and tips on how you can create emails. So, you know, some people wanna utilize just the built-in template functionality. You can do that but you can also utilize other functionalities such as Canva and Photoshop if you know how to utilize it. So we're gonna talk about how you can use those resources and how you can find a lot of these topics on our blog.photobiz.com so you can check out more resources like that. So we'll get started in just a moment. gonna give people some time to get settled in. And if you have any questions about email marketing or what you should do, that's today's focus. So I'm gonna give some people some time and then we'll get started. Again, if you're joining us today, we're going to be focusing on email marketing. So that's our main goal. We're going to talk about how you can utilize the email marketing feature within the PhotoBiz platform and how you can send up to 10,000 free emails a month. Yes, you get 10,000 free emails that you can send within the platform a month. So we're going to talk about that feature, how you can set up an email and send, how you can utilize the CRM and use the tag functionality to send out the right email lists. And we'll also just go over some best practices and some design options. So that's what we're gonna really focus on today. So let's just introduce the product itself first. So let's just jump in. We're gonna take a look at that and then we'll go and talk more on the high level. So I'm gonna log in. We're gonna see our website right when we log into the platform. You're gonna click on marketing in the left side menu. Here is where everything is going to be available for email marketing. You can see that you have your email campaigns, email automations, and then the rest of the pop-up uh, or marketing suite is gonna have pop-up builders and sticky banners. But we're gonna mostly focus on these functionalities today and highlighting the email campaign tool. So when you log in, you'll have this functionality and you can see that you have some if you've already built here. Uh, but what's really nice about the email campaign tool is you can click here, start a brand new one, start from scratch if you need to. Uh, you have other options that are right here as templates that you can select from. And what's nice is, you know, you can just go through, view a sample. If you're doing something for many sessions, maybe this is what you want it to look like. You can kind of see what it looks like. And then you can modify the colors and the text within here and the imagery as well. So it's very fast, very easy to manipulate when you want to. So we're just going to select this one so we can see what it looks like. And if you have your branding already put into the website in the branding section over here, it would auto populate with your logo and branding if there's a logo section uh, block added to it. So if you didn't have that there, you can delete it and then you can put it in. You'll see that it'll add to it or you can use the custom or auto functionality. We're just going to use the auto again 
and then it'll bring it back in there. So you'll have this option here. You can go how about you want to, and you know, there's tons and tons of looks that you can adjust for. So I'm gonna start again. I'm gonna select another one. Here we go. And you can see we have our logo added in, whatever we want to, and that's how it kind of works. So we're gonna go ahead, select another template. I'm just gonna choose this one for now. Splash into the savings. And if you have your branding, again, all set up, it'll auto populate in. And remember, just have those functionalities turned on. And we're just gonna select here. And you'll see your logo will populate in here. And that's how it'll go. And you know, we're gonna go ahead and see select, you know, custom, and then you can upload one in here as well. I'm just gonna select it from our branding section. And once you populated that in, you're good to go. And what's really nice about this feature is, you know, once you have everything set up, you can then start to see how your emails look. You can see how it's all systematically engineered. You can have your logo. You can have a nice splash image banner at the top. And this is really nice because you can manipulate this to be anything you want to. So if you already have stuff on your clipboard, you can add that directly into here. So maybe you're doing something for, you know, fall or winter. You can add that image directly in here and it will reflect that when you look at it again. So you can see now here it is, and you can change the colors to meet your branding, or maybe you're doing something seasonal, you want it to match, you can make changes there as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna select. You can change how you want to here. I'm gonna change the background color. That's good. Then you can kind of keep messing with it till you get desired looks that you like. I'm going to change this accent color maybe to more of a golden color. And you can match the background if you want to, or you can have it as a different shade. I'm just going to make it slightly off from there. And you keep messing with the look till you get the desired look that you're going for. You can kind of see what it's going for, right? So we're going to keep making those changes. I'm going to change the accent color to actually be like a blackish gray tone. Give it a charcoal look. There we go. And then you can change also the button color. So you can see that we have here our accent color too. We're gonna to make it also that black tone. Since we're still in fall, let's roll with these more fall accented colors. And I'm gonna change this mustard to more of a golden orangey tone. Halloween's right around the corner, right? Let's reflect that. There we go. And then you can add anything else. If you wanna change the text within here, you can definitely do that. You know, you can make it about mini sessions. You can get people to sign up. Send them where you want to, where you want this link to. If you're going straight to your .com or not, I'm just going to go to photobiz.com for now. There we go. So now we have that. So if you want to, you can have something very expressive and long de details about what the event's going to be like here, and then you can go from there. And then once they click on it, it'll send them wherever you want to. So if you can have it go to a landing page, you can have it go to a landing page. If you have something for booking, you can definitely do that. If I have something that's on this website that we built, maybe that's what we would send them to. So we'd have a booking now page. We select that. Go from there. We'll add that directly here. Go back over to our email marketing. And then we'll paste that in. So we can see what it looks like when it's fully operational. So we got that, hit refresh. So now this will go straight to that booking page that we've created. So if you have anything here, then they can book directly on that page. So it's a really nice way to get things kind of, you know, in a workflow. So one really nice thing about email marketing is you're creating things to entice people. So what are we utilizing? We're utilizing promotions, but we're also utilizing things like newsletters. So what are newsletters good for? Well, they're a great way to keep people in touch with what you're doing, what you've been doing, and what you potentially will be doing. Uh, you know, you want to people people in context of like, hey, I have this thing going on. Uh, maybe you can save money. So Black Friday's coming up. Maybe that's something where you can promote like, you know, some 
uh, seasonal costs that they might want to, or maybe even holiday seasonal sessions that you might be doing. You know, right now that'll be kind of the main focus that a lot of people are working on. So it's a great way to promote through that. That way people are booking directly onto your website. But you can also be thinking about next year. If you're utilizing wedding sessions or anything like that, this is where you can definitely get in there and start to promote people to book with you right away. Maybe there's even like a savings, you know, when the people are looking for photographers and stuff like that. And it's a great way to ask for referrals. If they know someone that might be getting married or something like that or needing photos, maybe they might know another senior. Maybe they might know, you know, their kid was a freshman, uh, now they're a senior. Uh, things like that, brothers, sisters, or even just friends or, you know, knowing other people within that town. They might be able to connect you through all these people. Maybe you do something with children. They know other people that might have children. It's a great way to keep that referral funnel going and then you can give them incentives as well. So just think about how you want to market at the end of the day and promote. I think you know you can keep things reciprocal and keep things growing within your business by utilizing these funnels. So not just to your current customers that you have in your CRM, but potentially to their friends and families as well. So those are the types of ways you're going to want to utilize email marketing. Get them to your website to book. That's the essential goal, right? And then you can share this page directly on your social media channels if you want to. So this could be living in a Instagram link or as a post on Facebook itself. So these are some ways you can utilize the newsletter functionalities, the uh, email marketing functionalities. And again, it all works within your CRM. So if you're utilizing this feature, you're going over here, you're seeing who it's tied to, your contacts. So if you have a contact list, you know, if you have an entire imported in here, what's nice is then you can send emails directly to this list. Now, I only have one right now, but I'll go ahead and just import or create a new contact just so we have someone else to talk to. So I'll just add myself. And that way you can see an additional list in here. And what's nice is if you're utilizing the functionalities properly, uh, you can have tags on customers as well. And we'll talk about tags in a moment and how they are useful. So we got in here, you know, we're going to send email marketing. When you're ready, you can go ahead and hit send. And you can see how many contacts you have and things like that. If you know if you're going to send it to more than one customer or not, you have that there. Uh, and you can keep adding more contacts if you want to. I'm just going to add another contact so we have more in here. Uh, so we're going to import another. Not import, but create a new one. Just gonna make this one Jeremy two. All right, so they're there. Now we got multiple ones in there. So you can see how this list is growing. The more people that are in your CRM, this is how you control your email lists. So we have them in here. Uh, and then you could either send it to all contacts by types, if you know if they're uh, you know customers, leads, or vendors, or custom. Maybe you want to send this to only specific customers if you know them by name. As soon as you start typing them in, you can create a list directly from here. So if they only had you know this list of person, we could then click continue, and then you could add a tag to this group. So if you add 10 names to an email that you're sending this to, or more, or whatever amount of people that you want to add to, then you could create a tag for this person. So we could say this person is, um, you know, wedding. And then we add a tag, and then you can send that email out to that customer. Now you want your account verified. This my account verified button will be the send button now. Once that's verified, and then you can send that email directly to that customer. Uh, then you want to create email subjects. Email subjects can be very unique because you want people to be enticed to actually open an email, right? So what are things that we can think of when we're doing that? Short and sweet, but also incentivize. You know, we want to talk about like all the emails that you get. What makes you want to open an email? Does it seem more personable or is it something that catches your eye with like a sales treatment? Those are types of email subjects that you want to focus on, but be aware of how spam filters work these days. Uh, Google and all these other systems out there are becoming more aware and now you'll be slid into different slots. Things that used to might just filter to spam filters might now go to promotional filters as well. So if you're worried about your emails not being viewed, you got to think about how your email is presented because these email subjects are headliners that uh, kind of filter amongst them. So if you're doing something personal, you could you know write an email thread that's like thinking about your next wedding or thinking about your next family portrait sessions. See, that doesn't say anything about sell, but it's enticing them to actually want to uh, maybe click to find out more about the session that you might have coming up. But if you tell them something like Black Friday sale or save now $50 off, 
these little context clues go through their filter chains and they start to understand like, hey, this is a promotion, so I'm gonna slide it here. Or this seems spammy, so I'm gonna filter it here. So be very aware of this conscious way of uh, when you're writing uh, the types of headlines that you want out there. And we have some great articles that can talk about that type of stuff too, and we'll, we'll reflect on those at the end. But this is where you will create those contacts right here and there. And once you're ready, you would send that out and it would go to that list that you've created. And then this tag will now be associated with that client uh, once tagged properly and sent. Uh, so when we come over here to a customer, you can see, you know, now we have our multiple customers and we don't have a tag yet on them, but you can add tags. And how can we add tags? You can add them custom directly here to that customer if you want to by customer. Or when you're importing them into the system, when you come over to the import tool, in the contact section, when you hit import, once your account is verified, you'll be able to upload a CSV file. So if you're using a third party tool such as MailChimp or Constant Contacts or some other third party thing, or even something from a uh, you know a Excel sheet or something like that, you can then download a CSV file and export that in. Now it's gonna allow you to export those in and it's gonna recognize columns and rows, but it's gonna ask for things like emails and stuff like that. So if it's an email row, that's where you're gonna wanna put that into the system because the email is the most important thing. Even if you don't have the name or phone number or anything like that, having the email is the most important thing and vital thing to import into the system. Once that's imported in, you can tag them on the way in and then you can tag them as a customer, a vendor, or a lead, but you can also give them a custom tag such as like maybe these are past family. So you can tag family onto that customer. And the way that works is it'll come over here and basically we're just gonna put a fake one here, but this will be family and then you'll see a tag attached to this person. Other ways tags can happen on your website is if you have a blog post or products that are for sale or a scheduled uh, thing, anything like that you can see has a tag built to it. So if we were selling something online, such as a package or something like that, you click on here, we go through the package setup. Once you get through there, you'll see that there's additional tags you can add here. So package one, this way you know when you're tagging things and you want to then later resell down the line to a customer, maybe a new product update or a package that you might have involved or something like that in the future, you know that this person was either A, a big spender if this package costs, say, we'll just make it $10,000, but whatever that package price was, maybe you sold them that and then that might be someone that you only wanna tag and filter to on an email list directly there. Think about that when you're putting that together. So then when it comes down to it, someone who is tagged with that package one, that's gonna get that type of email. So when we come over here, we have that tag now, right? So we're gonna hit here, add a tag. So what if they had package one, right? So now we know that this person might've purchased that at some point. So if that was there, when that person purchased that item, package one will now be attached to this person. So that would be great. So you'll see anything like that, anything they've done in that, and if they've made any comments on a blog. So any blog that you've put out there, if it has tags associated with it, like this one has wedding, if this person comments on here, you know, we can go ahead and put a fake comment on here. And we're just gonna put this. Wow, these look great. You know, if you put something like that, as soon as they submit, it's gotta go through the approval system if you have that. But when you go back over here, you go over here, you're gonna see in the CRM, go back to that person, go back to that customer. Once it's gone through the approval system, you'll start to see tags filter over it. So we're gonna go back to that blog real quick. I'm gonna go to comments. You can see this one, we're gonna approve it. There we go. So now when we go back over here, they're gonna start having, there it is, that tag for wedding. So anything associated on your website will be tagged in here. If they do anything through e-commerce, appointments, you name it, all these tags will start filtering to that customer, which is gonna be great. So the more they do that, the more fine your uh, categories can be. So when it comes to tags, here they are. We got tags already built into our system. When you start messing with it, you're gonna to start to see who's a part of it. So if you have multiple people tagged in wedding or packages and things like that, you can do multiple tags and filter to those lists that way. Or you can do single tags, it's up to you. But you can start to notice 
These are the type of customers that you're utilizing. You can also then exclude bike tags as well. Maybe you don't want people who, maybe they got family, but they didn't get a package one, you wanna hit that, and then that's what, how it'll go. So you can really create those types of packages uh, or those email lists that make it really finite to actually connect to and really, really distill down to you know the right person getting the right email. Uh, another thing is you can always test your emails. When you're sending an email to yourself, you can see what it looks like on the back end, so you're making sure that it looks good to your clients. So if I was gonna do something like this, I'm just gonna send it to myself. We're just gonna send it to myself. Oh, there we go, email sent. And then I'm gonna go check my email, see what it looks like. Once that email's there, I'll show you what it looks like. Let me pull it up. So you'll get an email, it'll say test. And then when you look at it in your browser or on your phone, this is what it's gonna look like. So they're gonna get something, it's gonna say test, and then the name of the email and everything else. So you can see what it looks like and then you can see how it performs when they click on it and stuff like that and where it goes to. So that's how those emails work. You know, you can always test it before you send and I always recommend testing it to make sure all the links are working, make sure it looks visually appealing to you and anything like that. That way you see what it looks like before you send it out, okay? So we have that back over to here. So that's how that works. So email marketing is very easy to do. You can create your own filters and utilize the CRM built right on in and really make the functionality very streamlined for your business. Now we're going to talk about a little bit about what those functionalities can look like. So we've looked at the basics. If you're just building a uh, right here, you can utilize it right here out of the box, go right ahead. But if you want to get more playful with it, you can definitely utilize different functionalities. So we're going to look at like things like how you can add an animated GIF. So if you have an animated GIF, you want to add in there, just upload it into the system. You can just download it right in there. So I'm just going to save this image real quick. And what you can do is you can go over to your files, go to documents, and then you can just upload that file directly in here. So you can upload different types of file types here. So just upload it in here. And then we have that image. I'm gonna copy the link. So if you're creating something, you wanna to send to someone, nice little email, maybe with this nice little thumb up, right? You can definitely do that. We're just gonna create a new one. I'm gonna start with uh, you know huge sales coming up. Got that in there. If our logo's in there, it's there. Then we can change this image out if we want to. You can just paste in the text. And then you can have it clickable if you want to. Maybe it goes to photobiz.com. Have that there. And then when we go back, now we got that email. And you can kind of see what it's doing. So you can definitely utilize GIFs if that's something you want to utilize within email marketing too, to grab people's attention, just to get their eyeballs on it. So that's one way you can utilize it. You can see something like here's an email with something for a boutique or you know for a photographer talking about a sale you can have something that just automated and just looks reflective and it's just it's more engaging right so you can see it visually pop at you so there's a ways you can definitely do it and i just showed you how to do it again you go to that control panel you take that image you drag and drop it into the document section of the file area and then boom once it's there you copy that link and then you can add it anywhere you want to we're going to do this one as well Let's go ahead and download it. That way you can see, again, what we did. We'll go over here, back over to files, and we're just gonna upload this file directly in here. There it is, copy. And the smaller the GIF, the better, just for opening, you know, anything too slow. Once it's in there, paste, paste it in. And there we go, look at that. Got this nice little flash sale going on, right? So this is really simple, easy to do. You can manipulate any of the emails that you want to, adding gifts in there, very simple, very, very fast to do. Uh, so you can really create really dynamic emails that way. And we'll talk more about the dynamic looks uh, in a moment as well. But just wanted to showcase how you can simply just add gifts, just to add some animations, add some pop to those emails really fast. So definitely check that out. You can see this blog article here uh, on our blog.photobiz.com. To get to it, all you have to go to is to the blog and then click on the marketing section and you'll see the article there. And then we have other looks that you can achieve. You can see you can create uh, very beautiful emails either utilizing with Photoshop, 
my in-house designer, uh, Meredith. She designed some beautiful emails for us that you can see, but she created this article that really will help you if you want to know how to create stuff. So if you know how to use Photoshop and you like designing things on your own, you have a very unique look that you're going for, you can create it all in Photoshop and then you can chop it up into elements. You know, you can see how she's arranged it. Top part, that's the banner, middle section, and then imagery, and then anything like this with text. So if you don't want any live text, you can have still image text. You cut it up into pieces, export them out individually, and then you upload them in as image blocks per section. And then if you have live text anywhere, you can keep that as live text. So you can kind of see what the email is going to look like at the end of the day once it's finished. And here's what it would look like once it's final design. So you can really make maximize the look and visual feel if there's something not out of box that you'd like. You know, maybe you just don't want to upload just an image. Maybe you want it more stylized. You can definitely stylize it utilizing Photoshop. And in the last few years, some great new features and tools are out there, such as Canva. So I know a lot of people love using Canva. You can design an email in Canva, such as this one. So maybe I want to take something from here. You can definitely design something directly in here, edit it, modify it your own way. You know, from this welcome, we make it into a book your session. Here we go. Something unique, having your eyes engaging, talking about the whole process and book today. You can then export that file out, then design within uh, Photobiz, select the look that you're going for. You can start with a blank one if you want to from scratch, add your branding in there, add in that design, and then boom, there it is. And look, you can make this whole image clickable. So when they click here, no matter where, it'll be basically that book now button. And there it is, you have it in there. Same thing that we've done before, paste it in, link it directly in here, and here's what it can look like. And if you export it as an animated GIF, look at that. You can even make it animated and make sure that it looks beautiful and it's engaging right away. And you can make it not loop. So it does this animation once. As soon as they open, it's like this boom, 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 and it's done. It can sit. So definitely think of ways that you can stylize your email by utilizing the email marketing feature. But you can utilize other third-party features such as Canva and you know utilizing another tool like Photoshop. Easy, simple, make them beautiful, export those files, send them over. Same thing, upload them directly into the file section if you need to, or directly to the block itself. And if it's a GIF in the file section, the document section, copy the link and then paste it in. Then you can have this beautiful, gorgeous look in no time. And that's what we want. We want to make sure it's engaging for our customer base. We want to make sure that it's attractive and we want to have some visual flair. Open rates are important, right? We want them to open and see the things right away. So those are some other articles that you can definitely check out again how you can utilize with the email marketing and another one that we've recently written um, that i really like is six email marketing tips for photographers what day should i send emails that's a big thing that a lot of people ask so let's kind of walk through some of that stuff again we're focused on number one using eye-catching visuals you want to get their attention right away so starting off with heavy text might not be the best way to engage with that customer so we want something appealing that represents your brand or whatever you're trying to do promotion wise directly through your email. If it's a newsletter, have a nice newsletter call out for it. If it's a promotion or a model call or anything like that, mini session, make sure that's driving them with some interest. You can have something directly here with your nice branding on it. Keep it short and sweet. Not many people read long emails like they formerly did. Now there are some email chains out there that are nice that you can read that are nice and digestible, but for most people, that's not gonna work. You know, we gotta think more like promotional, think like how Target or some of these other businesses run it. They're not very long. They show a few items and then they want you to click over and get into those funnels. So the same thing should apply to you. You want it fast and sweet. So let's take a look at this one, this is a little mini session booking one. You know, sessions are filling up fast, but you're before it's all gone. Now's the perfect time to capture your memories and professional photography and that you'll treasure for a lifetime. Book today with that call to action there. Simple enough. Click on it, drives them over to the website, and then to the booking options. You can personalize those emails a little bit. So when you're thinking about the emails, think about how those tag systems works. Again, is get to know your audience, tailor the message that specifically needs to be for them. Say you do family or wedding, not all your clients will connect to the same offers. Why would a young family want to see wedding related packages and vice versa? Organize your email list utilizing the tag functionalities and subgroups and segment those into interesting and that way you know their histories. 
send personalized messages to these groups. So maybe you're only sending this email to 10 people. At least you can you can send it out in mass, but then you can personalize it, making it more focused at the end of the day. Say only five of those 10 open it and then two convert. That's still a great deal, right? That's a nice conversion rate. So again, utilize tags, use those tags. This is a great feature inside the system. Check it out, cannot recommend it enough. It can help you with bulk, uh, bulk uploading tags in and customer lists, but then you can mod you know, modify them by adding your own tags to them. Four, offer a value. Values are very important. It gets people to want to make you know, an incentive jump. That's why we're so focused on Black Fridays or upcoming Prime Days and things like that. We have uh, you know, gotten very used to that in our uh, culture. You know, we kind of see free shipping, right? And that makes people buy sometimes versus not seeing it. So think of ways to incentivize people within here, even if it's 10%, returning customers. Maybe it's 30% off your first booking, things like that. Give a reason for people to want to have a value. Don't make it where you're losing money, but think of it as a way that you can gain one. That's kind of how many sessions work. Yes, you're getting a lot of volume in like a, a very short amount of time, maybe 10 customers in one day, and you're doing it at a single cost uh, for like maybe uh, instead of your full price for sitting fees like 250, maybe you're doing it for $100 a pop. So you got $1,000, but then that in-person sales functionality kicks in, right? So then you're upselling them the normal price of products. So yes, you might've taken a small discount on the front end, but you're still getting incentivized your normal rates on the post. So those are things you gotta think about that you can utilize within the email functionality, making sure that they can incentivize them, but also keeping you uh, having some revenue streams. Five, track your email's performances. Cannot state this enough, tracking is very important. So with your, your emails, you're gonna click here, you're gonna see you have here in the top, right here, tracking. This is going to run, and if you have any campaigns done, they're going to list here. And it's gonna show you information. Let me close some of these. It's gonna show you information just like this. So when you sent the email, you're gonna find out the name of the email, the list that it went to, who you excluded, et cetera, will also be listed there. So the total recipients, that's how many people got this email. The total how many people actually opened it, close to 38%, which is a great open rate. How many people clicked on it? That's also gonna be important. You wanna know how many people actually clicked through to go to what you want them to. And unsubscribe. Unsubscribe is important because this is gonna tell you if an email is effective or not or something might be happening. List change, emails become bad, uh, emails get purged. Some people, you know, systems uh, outside of us are kind of always tracking emails. And those emails are being tracked if they're good or bad. And this goes into the next one, which is our bounce. And people get kind of lost on what a bounce is. Bounce can mean lots of things. Usually it just means bad email. And what does bad email mean? Well, that person's email might be the incorrect spelled email. It could also mean that their inbox is full or that email has done something nefarious and it's being blacklisted now, which is a very rare case, but it can happen. Someone's email could be compromised, right? You know, and then now it's being used for spoofing and stuff like that. Um, or maybe that person just has ill intent. Hopefully not, <laughs> uh, but things like that. And just a lot of negatives. So the system kind of watches how email systems perform. And if this person is a good user or a bad user, if they open emails, if they don't open emails, that's all kind of accounted for in the balance system. Unsubscribes are more important because this is literally someone opting out. So be mindful of that number. Bounce, bounce can recover, but just be aware of it too. Sometimes, you know, some people think that means, oh, they didn't like my email, they bounced away. No, it means that email couldn't get to them. It could not get delivered, so it bounced back. So these are things that you wanna be mindful of when you're sending out emails. Track that information, see how well it performs, and if you see one does better than the other, follow it. Don't send things out that don't seem effective. Follow the ones that seem effective. And six, prepare a schedule. Scheduling is very important because you want to be able to get people to, you know, be excited. 
you want to be able to go ahead and plan ahead. I cannot state this enough. Preparing a schedule, planning ahead is very important. It makes it easier for you at the end of the day to know what your campaigns are going to be throughout the rest of the year. You can kind of go ahead and see like, hey, I'm going to do a fall promotion in November. I'm going to discount for fall photos. Uh, you know, who's it going to be sent by status? Uh, if it's scheduled or planned, uh, you know, you can figure out when you want to do it, what time you're going to send, if you know the time to send things and what day you're going to send it. And the subscribers, who's going to get sent to? You're going to send it to everyone or just that selected list. You can do that. And what that subject line you want it to be. You know, if it's going to be heavily promotional or is it going to be like check out my recent work or something like that. And what your preview text is. Now, that's the preview text is like kind of like the little blurb you see in an email before you open it after the headline. You can go ahead and pre-write that as well. And then what's in the content. If you want people to know what's in here, you can add your copy here so you know where everything is. Go ahead and filter out what your entire year is going to be. If you can plan that far ahead, I'd recommend to do that for your mini sessions or any type of photography that you're doing. Helps with marketing at the end of the day. And the big question, when should I send my marketing emails? Well, it's important to strategize and choose the best days and times to send your emails. According to research, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays tend to be the best days to send email marketing campaigns with open rates and click-through rates typically higher on those days compared to others. However, it's important to keep in mind that every audience is different and what works best for one photographer may not work for another. It's always a good idea to experiment with different days and times and see what resonates most. You know, maybe post-lunch works better for you, but pre, uh, you know, breakfast time might work for someone else. And the reason why we say that is people look at their phone in between these moments, right? When you're before going to work, you probably check your phone. Right when you sit at your desk, you might check your phone or your emails before you start working. Uh, same thing post-lunch. You know, people go to lunch, they're going to check the emails. So these are the types of things that you need to be aware of. Be, you know, think of where you want to slot in those emails. Anything in between those times might get lost in the mix of other emails out there. So it's kind of find out what your works best for you. Check out your open rates, your click-through rates. That's what you need to be mindful of. Those are things that are going to help you realize, hey, this is the best day for me. And Wednesday is always kind of the sweet spot. Let's think of it this way. Monday, everyone's too busy and tired. They don't want to do anything. They're going to go to work. They're not going to really do anything but try to get into gear. Tuesday, they're getting into gear, but they're mostly still working on their performance and work. Wednesday is when they kind of settle into everything. So they're checking more emails. They're checking more things. They're more relaxed because they're in the middle of the week. Thursday, same thing. They're kind of just getting through the day. And by Friday... They're either checking emails or they're just trying to ramp up their work schedule to get it done with so they can focus on a weekend. And sometimes weekends can be heavily promotional focus. So it's a great time to think about weekends, but people are also busy not looking at their phones as often. So think about that when you're sending out promotions, when to target your clients. And think about who your clients are. Are they younger? Are they older? Are they the same age as you? Think about how you use it if they're the same age as you. If they're younger, Think about how that might change. And if they're older, think about how they might want to open earlier versus later in the day. So these are things that very uh, you want to be aware of. So again, when it comes to email marketing, you can go to blog.photobiz.com, check out our guides. Photobiz email marketing guide is here to help you set, set up your emails and get going. This entire demo is available. You can watch anytime that you want. This will help you set up email marketing campaigns. And you can utilize, again, tags for marketing. Products, forms, blog posts. You can also tag on the way in. You can also see when things have higher open rates. You can use emojis in email headlines. And they typically have a 29% higher open rate. You can also check out and create emails utilizing the tool, just straight up within the system itself. Or you can utilize the email design tips that we've recommended through Photoshop or Canva. You can also understand this data. So this will help you understand how this data works for you. And that's going to help you at the end of the day create better email segmentations and overall better emails. So these guides are available at blog.photovisit.com. 
You can check it out. You can create beautiful ones with gifts. You can create really awesome emails. Just think about the value you can have. I'm gonna link this email or this blog post over in here for everyone to check out. And you can create them in Canva as well. So a lot of great resources, a lot of great things that you can check out here that's gonna help you create dynamic email campaigns that are just awesome and look beautiful and you can make these look fantastic in any setting that you're putting it through. So what if I was gonna send this email? I would test it out. Let's just check it out. Let's see what it looks like again within our email. We're just gonna send it email test. I'm gonna send it to myself again. And let's see what it looks like. And this is with an animated GIF. So it's going out to me. And once it's there, let's open it up. You'll see it in your emails. There it is. Now let's see what it looks like. There it is. So think about how your emails can look, feel, and are they attractive? As soon as I see something flashing, it may catch your eye, right? So just think about that. Think about your headlines. Headlines are important. You can do lots of research on headlines if you want to. Uh, it's a great way to kind of figure out how to engage with customers. But the most important part is uh, just focus on uh, what can get them to open. And you can utilize third-party tools out there. ChatGPT is a great one if you need help and recommendations. It can help you set up some ideas. So think about those functionalities when it comes to it. You know, I think we even have a blog article about that. Let's see. Go to our blog. Go to marketing. And five ways photographers can use ChatGPT for it. So think about your SEO research, writing content for your website, but email marketing. Guess what? Streamline your marketing headlines with email marketing campaigns and ad options. So let's take a look at this. Here's something. Headlines for fall photography mini sessions blog posts. So you could have something as simple as this for your email campaigns. You could have something generated for you. It just makes it fast and easy for you. Isn't that fast? Isn't that awesome? So think about how you can utilize some of these tools that are out there that are free that can help you when it comes to creating options. You know, uh, it's about expediting things when it comes to, especially people who don't have a lot of resources. That's a nice little resource to have in your back pocket when you need it. So definitely think about how you can utilize this for your ads, your email marketing campaigns, and even your social media marketing. And again, check out our blog.photobiz.com and click on the filter for marketing. You can see all our filters that are here that are focused on marketing stuff. So if you need help with setting up email marketing campaigns, or you know you just wanna look at how to set up a design with Canva, that's here as well. And three reasons why branding email might be important. So did you know your at business might be more important than you think versus something at Gmail? It's going to go into not just professionalism, but sometimes those emails get kicked out. Now, if these new filters in place, again, email systems are looking at where emails come from. You want to be able to do that. And again, you can add emojis to not just, uh, you know, blog posts, but also email subject lines. So think about how you can utilize that as well for your own business. And again, check out the blog email marketing guide here. I'm going to throw it over here in the comment section as well. Take a look at any time to help create better emails. And that's pretty much it for today. I just wanted to focus on how the email marketing tool works. Again, you get 10,000 free emails, 10,000. Send a month to your client list. So if you have two, if you have 5,000 clients, that's two emails you can send a month. If you filter it down even further, just, you know, you can go even far. You know, we have tons of people that utilize our platform and we utilize our own email marketing tool to send emails to. And we look at the data that's all collected there. You can check out past articles that are written about it and check out anything that is included in the marketing section. And that's basically all I wanted to talk about today. Again, we have a lot of great other articles that are rolling out there. Some brand new things that are coming out. Guess what? October, it's pretty much done. Crazy, right? But we've released some new updates to our font engine. You can see here, these controls are available for the global option. Soon they'll be ready for the block level options. But you can see something new coming soon. It's client gallery add-ons, November 7th. This is gonna be available, so you'll be able to add 
add-on options to the client gallery so clients can now, your clients can now get more out of it. So if they wanna make a purchase, they can have that there and they can have add-ons with those features. More photos, more profitability just for you. We also have new quick start videos if you're brand new to the platform. We have these very short, sweet, led by our head of host. Uh, she's going to be able to give us in there and help you out. And we also have some infrastructural updates. So if you need any help with how our system is working, we've made some adjustments to that. But we also have brand new features coming soon, such as block level font controls, resort images in the client galleries, and let your clients reschedule appointments. So these are some brand new features that are also coming out soon, such as also the clipboard updates as well that add folders. So I want to thank everyone for joining me today. If you have any questions and comments, please let me know. Still, I have a little bit of time. Thank you for watching. Otherwise, you can always check out the What's New tab for all the features that are coming out. And again, check out the six email tips. This is going to be really helpful uh, when it comes to creating new things, okay? All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I hope you all have a great, wonderful weekend. Stay safe during our spooky season. Hope to see a lot of cool photos from you photographers. I'm sure I will. And we'll see you next time.